Hi, welcome back to the second half of my learning how to use the circular sock machine. I'm going to do 15 days in January. It may not be every day. Um, I made 11 pairs of socks for my immediate family for Christmas and then I gave all my siblings and in-laws um, an order form for socks hoping that people that don't really want socks won't fill out the order form and the people that do will get socks. So I got my first order back from my sister and her husband and my sister wants shorty socks, size 9, in bright colors and I think that's all the choices I gave them. I needed their name, their size, whether they wanted bright colors and neutral and whether they wanted a long cuff or a short cuff. I don't know how to do the ribber yet, so I'm doing a mock rib on the top, and I'm doing my sister's first, and she wanted shorty socks in bright colors, and uh, she wears the same shoe size as me, so I'm gonna do hers exactly like I did mine, and I'm starting right here. I've got my um, setup bonnet on, and my waist yarn done and I put in a rip cord and now I'm going to start on the cuff which I'm going to do a 40 round hung hem and I've got my counter started so I'm ready to start cranking for 40 rounds and then I'll stop and hang the hem See some dog hair. Okay, that's thirty. I need to go ten more to forty. Okay. I'm going to remove my weight and I'll start hanging the hem. With this mock rib, it's really easy to see where you begin for hanging the hem. They're in, I do a seven by one mock rib, so there's six stitches that are regular size and then one, one that's long, and that's the seventh hanging one. I'm going to pause this until I get a little closer to the end so you don't have to watch my hands for a half an hour. Okay, I've got everything picked up for the hung hem except for these needles at the edge that are down in the cylinder. So I'm going to put my weight back on and crank a little bit till those needles raised, raise and then finish hanging the hem. Okay, I'm removing the weight again, and we've just got, I think, seven more to go, so I won't pause for that. You'll just have to look at my fingers. Sorry. Okay, so those are all on, and I'm going to do 
30 rounds of hem or 30 rounds of leg. I've already done the hem. Put my weight back on. Okay, at 29, I'm going to start, stop here at 6 o'clock and I'm going to add my needles back in because I'll need all of those for the heel. all but two in and I need to start cranking around to get those and then I'm gonna do I'm gonna get all the way up to 35 before I actually start the heel because I want to have a little bit of a little bit a little bit of stockinette between the ribbing and the heel. Okay, that's 35. And then I'm going to stop here at 6 o'clock and pull up the needles in the back so that they will be out of work and I can start the heel. One thing I do sometimes is leave one needle partially down so I'm trying to be very careful to physically and with touch check to make sure all of those needles at the back of the the top of the foot really are up and out of work. So we'll start the heel. Raise my Buckle up just a little bit while I'm stopped. Okay, we'll crank around to the back. Raise one needle on the right. Engage the heel spring so that the yarn stays taut. And come around. gotten to the point where I can do a lot of this without my heel fork and I can kind of tell where I need to add that in. I can also tell or remember if I've lifted the needle or not because as you're decreasing stitches the last needle that is attached to the yarn is the one that needs to be raised. That yarn was kind of up on the needle so I'm going to go ahead and put my heel fork on. I've raised the needle. Another mistake that I made at the beginning was putting the heel forks too high up on the cylinder and they really pull down better if they're a little bit lower. And I line them up with my yellow marks which is where I end the heel. Okay, so I've lifted that already. I'm going to come back around. I'm going to keep 
lifting just one needle at a time until I get to the point where there's two left and then I will lift the last two together. like to periodically check and make sure that I'm at the same place on both sides of my knitting because way more often than I'd like I forget to lift a needle on one side or the other and I'm not even and then I have to fudge to make up for that. One thing that I forgot to do is to, excuse me, put markers on the first needle that I raised on each side because when we come back I'm going to skip that one and just go on to knitting around and that closes up the hole. have not. This is the needle where the yarn is attached and I have not lifted that so I'm going to lift that. Oh, I am fudging on this side because I forgot to lift on that one. I'm going to lift two. And two on this side. And then after this, I'm going to start increasing. And I believe I'm going to raise my heel fork a bit. I'm going to do what's called a suicide heel and I'm just lowering this not quite all the way making sure that the yarn is behind the little lever on the needle rather than wrapping it. I've been having good luck with this so hopefully that continues. to lower the first two together and I didn't so that will not be the end of the world. Thank you. 
raise this up again. Somehow I'm off over here because I've still got three on this side. I've only got one on that side. I'm going to put down two. Here, I'm going to stop at the 6 o'clock position because then I'm going to lower all the rest of the needles. Remove these little reminder safety pins. Make sure you get everything down and then Double check all of those needles to make sure that the latches are open. You may need to lift them up just slightly. Okay, so now we're going to start her foot, which is 63 rounds. That was round one, and I forgot to reset my marker and my counter. Sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three. We're going to stop here at six o'clock, and then we're going to raise the needles for the toe. And again, we're going to double check them all by touch and visually to make sure that they're all up. Okay, they are all up. Oh, I had my heel fork engaged the whole time on that foot. I should have taken that off. Hopefully they won't be too short. That does increase the tension some. I'm going to raise my buckle here and get it past the heel which has extra fabric so that we uh, don't have to worry about the tension difference between the sides here at the beginning of the toe. Heel fork is engaged. So we're going to come on over. And again, we're going to lift one at a time until we get to right here, and then we'll lift the last two together. of try and hold my weight underneath the cylinder to the back while I'm starting the heel before I put on the heel forks. Oh, I don't think I lifted up one. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Nope, I'm good. Let's 
see that one was sliding up a little bit and that tells me it's a good time to put the heel fork in. I cannot read my sock machine as well as I can my hand knitting, but I'm getting better at it. Seeing what the machine is doing to prevent myself from dropping stitches. And I've lifted that one up because that has the yarn attached to it. split the yarn on that one. I'm going to get it over the needle and then we'll lift that one up. Make sure I pull that heel fork back and away from that stitch. And then I kind of go the other way on the other side. on the side and then one more on the left side and then we're going to raise the last two together and then lower the first two together. Okay, so we're raising both. On the right. And then we're raising both on the left. And please note, this is not a tutorial because I am still learning and I may be doing something totally wrong. <laughs> or I don't know wrong, but maybe not the best way. So we'll lower two on this side. Again, gotta make sure that the latches are open. See, they just wrap themselves. It's really pretty ingenious. You just have to make sure that you know where the latch is before you start. Uh, again, I'm going to mark the spot where I want to stop. to uh, avoid holes. I think I'm going to raise my fork up a bit. So you just get a lot of extra fabric right in there. And you need to increase the pull in that area to keep things on the needle. Okay, so we still need to lower one down there.
amazingly. We are still at the same place on both sides of the sock. This one we're going to stop at 6 o'clock. Oh. My needle didn't go quite far enough over and my needle started to go down and close before it should have. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Now I'm going to put the back needles down, but I'm also going to mark the halfway point for um, kitchenering up my toe. I'll just use these same pins for that. Yeah, I'm almost done. Okay, and we're going to go one round around and then we're going to stop over here and add our waste yarn in. I'm going to leave enough of my working yarn for kitchenering. And I've kind of figured out after a few times of leaving way too much or not enough where to cut my yarn. And for me it's kind of like at the bottom of my crank wheel when it's still through the mast. Sorry for that lovely picture of the back of my head. I am, you can't see it, but I'm threading the waste yarn through my mast. Come down through my light and into my yarn carrier. And I really um, need to start this at the right place. I feel like five or six rounds is about optimal for this. If you put too much in, then it kind of gets in the way when you're kitchening. remove most of my weights before I crank it off and just hold down on it a bit so that I don't drop anything on my foot. And there is the, the sock attached to the sock bonnet. Come back here.
we've got a sock. First one of the pair. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow or soon.